reverse DCF. Uh, you you do reverse DCF when you need to ascertain key what is the growth rate at which this business needs to grow in order for it to justify its current share price. Okay, मतलब किस growth rate पे एक business grow करना चाहिए अपने आज के share price को justify करने के लिए. Okay, so I have a model which so I'll demonstrate as to how you can use the model. Okay, and it's very easy peasy. There's some nine ten uh, small steps that small inputs that you need to provide to that model. Okay, and that model will will spit out a growth rate. ठीक है so and yeah you don't have to take any assumptions uh, just uh, pull the financials of the of the business and just plug in those financials in the model okay uh, so it's pretty straightforward okay? all right see before i pull up the reverse ccf model uh, please allow me one minute to explain the difference between dcf and reverse ccf for those who don't know okay so dcf for discounted cash flow is a methodology Through which we value a business. Okay, so the value of a business is the present value of its future cash flows. Okay, so in DCF methodology, what we do is we forecast cash flows by taking assumptions into the future. Okay, and then we discount those cash flows to the present. So this process requires us to take a lot of assumptions. Okay, and in reverse DCF, you are saved from having to take all those assumptions. Okay, let me pull a slide real quick before we jump to the model. Okay, let me take you to that slide. All right. So let's get a sense uh, of the difference between DCF and reverse DCF before we jump to the model. Okay. So in a DCF, you you need to take assumptions on uh, revenue growth, profit margin, capital expenditure, working capital, cost of capital, and of course you also have to have a forecast period. And the output of a DCF model is intrinsic share value or the fair share value of the business. That is the output of a DCF model, and you require to take a lot of assumptions. Okay. In a reverse DCF. You are largely saved from having to take all these assumptions. The inputs that you need, that we'll discuss in a bit, okay, are pretty straightforward. Okay, so some examples of the inputs are: you of course need a, uh, you need to plug in the current market share price, okay, the revenue, the profit margin, uh, the capital efficiency of the business. That is something you need to plug in the model. Okay, the only assumption that you need to take is forecast period. Abhi, uh, that we'll discuss in a bit. Okay, all right. Abhi, we'll discuss karenge. And the output of the reverse DCF is an implied growth rate. That this is the growth rate at which the business needs to grow in order for it to justify its market share price. Okay, that is so. This is the difference. Okay, just one more important point before we jump to the reverse DCF model because reverse DCF can be abused very easily. Okay, so it's very important to understand when reverse DCF will work and when it will not. Okay, so reverse DCF. Does not work for startup or young companies and even companies which are in the declining stage. Okay, see every company has a life cycle. A company starts, then it's a young growth company. It has very high growth in this phase. Okay, and then it, uh, you know, it kind of starts plateauing. Once it has achieved uh, quite a lot of growth, it starts plateauing and then becomes mature and then it starts declining. Okay, so that's the usual life cycle of a company. Okay, so don't use it for young companies or declining companies. In fact. DCF works best for mature, stable companies. Okay, companies which have, uh, you know, uh, grown a lot. But the companies which either uh, have a moderate growth or they have a they have a moderate to low growth. So, for them, DC reverse DCF works best. Okay, which have already kind of achieved like stable, good enough margins. Okay, it reverse DCF also works for companies in the in the high, slightly high growth phase as well. Okay, but this is the ideal. uh you know sweet spot for reverse dcf this life cycle stage so please understand that okay so that's why reverse dcf many a times may not give you the intended results but for many like mature companies or mature growth companies or even like high growth companies which have like stable margins unke liye reverse dcf will work all right okay and abhi iska kya isse uh, you know why this important because this would kind of help with one of the inputs in the reverse dcf as well that is something that we'll see All right. Without further ado, now let's jump to reverse DCF. So let me pull that model up. All right. So I have the model up. Okay. So if you see column B, okay, these are the set of inputs that the model needs. Okay. So from so there are what around ten inputs. Okay. Again, don't get overwhelmed. Pretty straightforward inputs. Okay. And then this column C, you have the guide as to how you can go about and fill those inputs. Okay. And then. Column D is where you'll plug the actual input values. Okay, and then uh, here what I have is uh, in column F. This is just how the model behaves, how the underlying DCF model okay, behaves, or what assumptions leta hai. Okay, this is what 
यहाँ पे मैंने मैंशन किया है ऑल राइट सो नाउ लेट्स लेट्स जस्ट गो एड एंड पुल द इनपुट्स सो द फर्स्ट इनपुट इज रेवेन्यू वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड पुल द टी टी एम लास्ट फेलिंग ट्वेल्व मंथ्स का रेवेन्यू सो दिस आई वॉल्डी पोल्ड एंड सो द कंपनी दैट वी आर सो दैट वी आर डूइंग रिवर्स डी सी एफ ऑन इज हरी ओम पाइप्स सो उसका लेटेस्ट रेवेन्यू एफ फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव का इज दिस मच विच आई पोल्ड इन हाइड ऑफ टाइम एंड देन यू हैव दबिट मार्जिन ऑपरेटिंग मार्जिन तो इफ यू सो हाउ यू कैन डू दैट इन स्क्रीनर यू हैव दी एबिट आर ओके विच इज वन सेवेंटी फाइव ओके सो दैट फ्रॉम दैट वन सेवेंटी फाइव वी हैव रिमूव द डिप्रिसिएशन एंड दैट्स हाउ यू गॉट एंड देन वी हैव एक्सप्रेस दिस एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ रेवेन्यू सो द एबिट इज नाइन पॉइंट टू परसेंट ओके एंड देन द थर्ड इम्पोर्ट इज इन्वेस्टेड कैपिटल लेट मी शो एज टू हाउ यू कैन एस्टिमेट इन्वेस्टेड कैपिटल लेट मी गो टू स्क्रीनर एंड शो यू की इन्वेस्टेड कैपिटल कैसे एस्टिमेट कर सकते हैं ओके लेट्स लेट मी मोर स्क्रीनर Just pulled open uh, Harium pipes. Okay, so let's uh, go straight to the balance sheet. We are in the balance sheet section, so we need the last balance sheet. Okay, the latest one. Okay, so now, now let me show you what items you need to pick. Okay, so let's start with the asset portion. Let me just pick up a uh, pick up my pen real quick. Okay, so first thing that you need is okay, you need fixed assets. You need CWIP. So that is these two items. Uh. You need uh, for in, uh, working capital. You need to pick your inventory, your trade receivables. You do not pick cash. Okay, you pick loan advances and you pick other asset items as well. Okay, so you add all these items in pink. Okay, you add all these items in pink. Okay, and then you move to the liabilities side. Okay, let me take a different pen for liabilities. You pick orange. Okay, so from your liability side, okay, you pick trade payables, advance from customers, other liability items. So basically, all these three items. Okay. and then you net out so whatever you got by summing up these items in pink you net out the ones that you have in orange so basically you net out liabilities from your assets okay so that's how you'll get to your invested capital okay so what we have done basically is we have uh, we have first we added net with uh, fixed assets okay then current liabilities from that we removed current we added current assets and then from that we removed current liabilities that's how you get to invested capital so this is what we Have done, ठीक है? All right. So if you do this math, so the answer, the investor capital would be closer to around nine hundred twenty-four. You can also do the same calculations from uh, from the balance sheet of the company itself. All right. So let's plug this nine twenty-four in our model and move forward. Okay. All right. So we are back to the in our model. So if you see investor capital here, pe we have plugged this in. Okay. The next step is next step is you need to you need to estimate capital efficiency. Sorry. You need to estimate capital efficiency. What you need to do is you just need nine twenty. Uh, you you already have the revenue one three five seven. Just divide it by nine twenty four, and you get the capital efficiency, which is one point five. So what does capital efficiency mean? He, uh, for every rupee of capital that you are investing in the business, you are getting one point five rupees in return as revenue. So Harium ka capital efficiency is on the lower side vis a vis their peers. Okay, then. The next set of inputs are debt and cash. So we already, I already have pulled in debt and cash ahead of time. Straightforward uh, pull from the balance sheet. Okay. Then the next input is forecast period. Okay. This forecast period period you need to make some judgment. Okay. So let's say if you are doing a reverse DCA for a company which you think has a long growth growth runway ahead of itself, then you may want to give it a forecast period of ten years, fifteen years. Okay. Uh, but by the way, let's say if you are valuing, let's say HUL or uh, you know any company which is Which is deeply penetrated in the market doesn't have a lot of growth. Okay, then you may just want to give it a growth period of five years. Okay, all right. But this company we believe may has a good growth runway ahead of itself given the uh, given the massive uh, under penetration of steel right now, uh, given the massive infrastructure real estate development which we expect to happen. So right now I've given it a forecast period of fifteen. By the way, this model is configured to work for fifteen years. And by the way, you can refer this slide which we had discussed. in the beginning of this video we can refer the slide to make your judgments on the forecast period which is the input uh, in this in this reverse dcf ka model okay so uh, we took the example of hindustan liver hul so hul is is in the mature uh, stable growth phase okay so for hul uh, that's why you kind of give it a forecast period of 5 years but hari om pipe on the other hand i believe it's in a uh, is in a high growth phase right now given as i said the the massive demand for uh, Uh, structural steel tube and pipes in India. So it's in a high growth phase. So 
for companies like uh, Hariom, you can give it a forecast period of 15 years. Okay. So this way, uh, so depending upon, uh, so first you form a judgment as to what is the life cycle stage the company is in, and then you accordingly take their, you accordingly make a judgment on the forecast period. Okay. And by the way, this model, okay, I've configured for it to work for three forecast periods, five years, 10 years and 15 years. So in the forecast periods, for these three forecast periods, the model will work. Okay. All right. Let's just go back to the model. So 15 minute all the year. Then the next is discount rate. Okay. Discount rate. Think of this as a minimum return expectation that you expect from your investment in a company. Minimum return expectation. Okay. So let's say if you're valuing a large cap, you're doing a, a reverse receiver large cap, then you put 10%. For a mid cap, you can put 11%. This is just a thumb rule. No, nothing hard and fast. Okay. For a small cap, you take 12% for micro cap, you can take 13% and so on and so forth. So this being a small cap, I have taken 12%, okay? but feel free to change it. Okay, But don't like uh, go crazy on this because the value, the reverse GCF would be very sensitive on the discount rate. Okay, So then the next set of inputs would be number of shares and then the per share value. So per share value right now, okay? it is right now, I think it is 388. And then terminal value. So what is the growth rate at which you think the business will grow beyond 15 years? Okay. Once it has saturated the market, then once, once uh, it has fully penetrated the market, then what is the growth rate beyond uh, the forecast period at which it will grow? So we have 6% le hai, which is closer to the GDP growth rate. Okay. And then the last input is, is a, is a, uh, this is just a hit and trial input. Okay. So aapko karna kya, what you need to do is, you need to try multiple growth rates in this particular cell okay, until, until the calculated share price, until the calculated share price okay, is close enough to the per share value, which is 388. So you have to do this hit and trial here. So now 20% plugged in. So basically the model is saying that if this company, if let's say if this company is close at 20% for the next 15 years, then the fair share value of this business, fair share, per share value would be 453 rupees. Okay? So what do we do? We have to reduce the growth rate. So if I reduce the growth rate, see the value of this business falls. Let's say if I plug in 18%, if I plug in 18%, okay, then the calculated share price from the underlying model is pretty close to the current per share value, which is 388. Okay. So what, what does it mean? Iska matlab kya hua? Iska matlab kya hua? Okay. So in order for this business to justify its current share price of 388, okay, this business needs to grow at roughly 18% for the next 15 years. That's the response. That's the output of this reverse DCF. Okay. Now you have Then you have to think. Okay. Do you think, can, can this business grow at 18%? If you think that this business will not grow at 18%, this is too high a growth rate for this business. Okay. Then your conclusion should be uh, uh, the market capitalization of this business is overvalued. The business is overvalued. Okay. But if you think the business will grow at 18% or even higher than 18%, then tapto, this business as per your conclusion should be that this business is undervalued. Okay, so you have judgment khud lena hai. Okay. Hope you are finding my content valuable. If you are an investor interested in learning thorough fundamental analysis and valuation, or if you're an aspiring equity research analyst okay, who uh, is interested in learning these skills to get into such roles, then I have a program suited to your needs. Okay. So uh, in my program, uh, my, uh, you know, I, my, uh, I cover quality and well research content. I cover diverse industries okay? and the topics that I teach in this program through live exercise and case studies are financial statements. I uh, also teach you how to analyze and interpret financial and operating ratios. Uh, it's pretty extensive okay? and how to assess the forensics and how to analyze the quality of the management, how to read con calls and annual reports, okay? how to analyze an industry and how to size the market. Okay? Uh, how to assess moats in a business, financial modeling, and valuation. And I also help you to form and articulate your investment thesis. So if you're someone who thinks will be benefited by this program, then feel free to reach out to me at my email or reach out to me on LinkedIn. All right. Thank you. And also, you see, you can uh, you can plug and play with other inputs as well. So if you think right now, the underlying assumptions that this the capital efficiency of this business is 1.5, but let's say the business is able to work on its working capital, it's able to reduce its working capital, then what will happen is the capital efficiency of this business will increase, let's say to two. Okay. Then what will happen is 
the, you see the calculated share price jumps. Okay, so if I now reduce the uh, growth rate to fifteen percent, or let's say even fourteen percent or twelve percent, so you as I'm reducing the growth rate, the share price is falling. So let's say if I reduce to eleven percent, if I reduce, if the if I reduce to eleven percent, the fair share price is four hundred. If I reduce it to further, so so what so what the model is telling me now is he. If the business is able to improve upon its working capital, okay, is is becoming more capital efficient in the future, okay, then the business needs to grow only at ten and a half percent over the next fifteen years in order for it to justify its current share value. Okay, so ये बोल रहा है मॉडल. So so basically what you can do is you can play with these series of inputs, okay, based on your understanding of the business. You can play with these inputs to arrive at your conclusion. Okay, and then make a decision whether you want to invest in this company or not. All right. Okay. So hope this was helpful. So guys, hopefully, are you helpful? Who are you?